Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is an American holiday that's about family, food, and giving thanks. Since I'm a little far from home today, you can all join me in at least one part of the tradition, which is that in my family, at the start of the meal, we all go around the table and we say something that we're thankful for. So it might take a long time for everyone to uh, participate this out loud, but you can share with your neighbors, and I'll share with all of you. I am thankful that each of the seven billion people in the world have the capacity to inspire positive change in others, and that at least 800 of them have decided to apply this capacity to making sustainable palm oil the norm. If you think about this, this is an extraordinarily ambitious goal. One might even say it's daunting. Why? Because achieving it depends not only on the people in this room ensuring that their own actions are consistent with this goal, but the ability of each of us to inspire others to take action. RSPO's commitment to transparency is a key element in making this goal achievable. Why? Because our ability to inspire others depends on the credibility of the messages that we send to each other. Our ability to act strategically and consistently with each other depends on our access to credible, accurate information and our willingness to share this information, ideas, and experience. I propose that new mapping technologies can help trigger market transformation. Um, I would encourage that the RSPO to look at a lot of the initiatives that are happening in the NGO sector and the government sector that are promoting a more accurate access to transparent information, um, because a lot of these different initiatives um, are putting information out there that can really help the RSPO achieve its mission. So, just to illustrate. When an individual has access to information combined with good ideas, his or her ideas can lead to positive impacts. When a group of people with a shared mission have, common to, have access to common information, collective action can lead to transformative impact. With new mapping technologies, it is becoming easier and cheaper to generate transparent, credible information which can be used to trigger transformation. I'm just going to give three examples of ways that new mapping technologies can help answer some of the questions, uh, challenging questions facing us. These examples are based on our work in Indonesia, but as I give these examples, I would encourage you to think about how they may be relevant to other questions that you may be asking, um, or they, how they may be applicable in other parts of the world. The first example is actually about communication. In some cases, we don't need complicated new technology to collect new data. We only need to think of new ways to collect, the, um, to share the data that we already have. What is most important here is not generating new information, this is generating new insights and common understanding from shared information. Um, one question that many of us may have after hearing the greenhouse gas working group recommendation and some of the recommendations coming out of the EU RED, for example, is where are the degraded lands that producers should prioritize for low carbon development? There's been a lot of confusion and controversy around the term degraded land because different definitions have been associated with it. Here is one map that may help. This web application, which is still under development, will be publicly available and free for everyone to use by mid-2012. Um, it will also be much improved thanks to a lot of the feedback that I've received from many of you, which I really, really appreciate. Um, so this map shows potentially suitable quote, and not suitable areas for oil palm plantations based on a set of indicators that we developed with our Indonesian partner organization, Sakala, when we were identifying one of our pilot sites. Now, what is most important about this map is not that it makes one single definition of degraded land, because it doesn't. The most important thing is that it is transparent, intuitive, and interaction, interactive. All of the data with documentation will be available for download. So users will be able to know what the map can and cannot be used for. They'll know how accurate the data is or not. Um, and it is intuitive because it is designed to help the user actually understand all of the criteria, environmental, economic, and uh, legal considerations that were included and not included to create this map. So basically, 
It means the user can instantly understand by looking at the interface that when we said degraded land, we were using the term in the sense of having low carbon and biodiversity, or in other words, land cover without trees. I mean, it will also allow the user to you know, change different soil types, which may be more interesting, to make a map that's more suitable for their uses. Um, the second example is about using new pe mapping technologies to generate new transparent information. We've heard a lot about of the importance of trust. When it comes to the issue of um, developing financial support mechanisms, for example, for maintaining co forest cover, the best way to build trust is through transparency and accountability. Um, rapid advancements in remote sensing, which is the interpretation of satellite images to make maps, has made forest cover monitoring cheaper and more accurate than ever before. However, it is a problem that many non-experts or people who aren't specifically working in that field um, and the general public may have problems accessing this data. So another example of something that we're working on is helping make this information available in a way that can be useful, for example, for the RSPO. So this is an example of a website that will put um, very objective, peer-reviewed, um, maps that have been created by our partner South Dakota Univers State University and SAR Vision about um, forest cover change and the present forest cover. So anyone will be able to have access to it and anyone will be able to use it to say, in a particular area of my interest, what has the history of land uh, forest cover change been and what was the forest cover in 2010. So my third example is about locally appropriate mapping technologies. Now the two previous examples have their uses, but large-scale mapping is simply not appropriate for answering all types of questions. Uh, one of the most challenging questions that producers face is the question of how to achieve free prior informed consent. Now as we heard from Musa Mass, it is a long process that requires ongoing commitment to doing the right thing. This question really cannot be fully answered by technology. It has to be answered by people. However, using locally appropriate technology can help. For example, community mapping is a process that helps communities document their claims to land, which can then be used during an FPIC process. In addition, community monitoring can be organized to help build trust and follow through on commitments that have been agreed to between the company and the community. Um, our partner organization, Sakala, has facilitated community mapping and monitoring, which includes using handheld GPS devices and cameras, which are both inexpensive technologies that can be easily used in the field. And now that I've given these three examples of new mapping technologies that can help trigger mapping, uh, market transformation, I leave you with this question, which is what insights or technologies can you share to support market transformation and I look forward to discussing this question with all of you. Thank you.